Hey everyone, so in today's video, I'm gonna do a breakdown of my go-to film photography gear, and that includes cameras and lenses, but also accessories. So things like light meters, tripods, bags, filters, stuff like that. And I just hope that this helps answer any of the questions that people are often asking me. So this video is a follow-up to one that I did a few weeks back. That one just looked at the video gear that I use for this YouTube channel and then also for filmmaking, but this one is gonna look just at film photography gear and it's gonna look at kind of my main kit that I use for working on projects. I have some other cameras as well, but they're either sentimental value or just for review for this channel. So also wanted to note that I am gonna put links in the description below to all these cameras and accessories if you're interested in checking them out. But let's start things off, we'll jump into it and we're gonna look at kind of what I would consider my main go-to camera. So this is one of three cameras that makes up my working kit. And it's probably my favorite camera that I've ever used in the film photography world for a couple of reasons. First off, 6.7 is definitely my favorite medium format size. The amount of detail you can pull out of these negatives is just crazy, especially scanning these now on the CoolScan 9000. I can get these huge files that are almost, I think 11,000 pixels wide. So just no limitations when it comes to printing. But when it comes to 6.7 cameras, I've owned this particular camera in the past, and then I also owned an RB6.7. But for me, the Pentax just fits the way that I work. And probably one of the biggest reasons is just the ergos. So the SLR style ergonomics uh, just opens up a lot of freedom when you're shooting. So you can go, you can shoot with this handheld, even though the camera itself is pretty massive when you first start using it, you get used to it pretty quickly. And the 672 model in particular, this is my favorite just because of this right hand grip. Uh, this was on none of the other 6x7 Pentax models until the 672. You do pay a premium for it. These cameras are getting more and more expensive, just like a lot of other film photography gear. But for me, it's worth it just because I use this camera a lot. And this is such a huge addition for me. It really makes this camera nice to hold and nice to use. And then the updated meter on the 672, so I have the metered prism, it has uh, center weighted spot and multi-segment metering, super accurate. I end up using this a lot of the times instead of a handheld meter, and I've always been really happy with the results that it's given me. So just a super nice camera to use. If these specific things aren't too big of a deal for you, so the right hand grip you can do without, uh, the earlier 6.7 Pentax models are still really great cameras, obviously, and you can pick them up for a lot cheaper than this. Uh, I don't even know what current rates are on this camera. I don't want to say because it seems like they're changing all the time, but I know you can pick up an older 6.7 Pentax model still for like under $1,000 with a lens. So pretty good deal when it comes to that. So when it comes to lenses on this camera, I own two and they're the only two that I'll probably ever own because they basically suit me perfectly. The first one is the 75mm 2.8 and this is actually a recent purchase for me. In the past I've owned the 6.7 75mm 4.5 which is a really common one. This 75-2.8 is definitely pretty rare. They made this kind of at the end of the Pentax 6.7 run. I don't know how long it was available for, but the 75mm 4.5, I really liked that lens. Some even say uh, it's better than this lens because it has less distortion. But the biggest drawback for me with that is just a slower aperture. So it's an f4.5 lens. This is a 2.8. So it just opens up some nice options for creativity. And then it also gives you quite a bit brighter viewfinder image, which for me is huge. After using the second lens that I have, which is the 105 2.4, swapping over to an f4.5 lens just made the viewfinder seem so much darker. Uh, so yeah, this one I picked up recently, and I've been really happy with the images that I've created using this lens. It has a great look to it. And then, like I said, opens up some uh, potential for creativity uh, using this for portraits, which is something that I wanna do in the future coming up. But the second lens I own, as mentioned, is the 105 2.4, which is probably of no surprise to people. This is obviously one of the legendary lenses for this setup. And this lens I actually never owned before when I first got the Pentax 6.7. I had a 95-2.8 instead, uh, but I ended up buying this lens with this camera when I got it. This is the last version they made. It's the SMC 6.7 version, and obviously is just a super fast lens for a 6.7 setup. So it's an f2.4, uh, so one of a kind really. 
And I've just enjoyed the rendering of this lens and, and just the creative options it's opened up. I've even used it for uh, some landscape images, shooting subjects wide open and just getting this really kind of nice look with some separation in it. So yeah, this lens, latest 6.7 version and then the 75 mil SMC 2.8. So for me, these two lenses really kind of suit the type of work I do. They equate to around a 35 mil and a 55 mil in the 135 format. And for me, really, I'm not after anything uh, wider or longer than that. Okay, so second camera in my kit is the Pentax 645N, another part of the Pentax family. I've owned this particular one for I think about a year now. And this is almost just like a smaller 6.7. Obviously there's some differences. Uh, the biggest one is this camera has autofocus and then obviously the smaller negative size. But this camera for me has kind of replaced my 35 millimeter cameras. I'll talk about that after. This is kind of my travel walk around cam. It's just really, really enjoyable to use and fun to use. And I have the 645N version. There are the original 645 versions by Pentax, which are cheaper. Uh, but what I like about this camera, the first thing on the original 645, you just had these buttons here with a little screen and that was how you change your shutter speed. I owned one of those in the past and it really kind of bugged me. It's not a huge deal, but I just really never liked it. So the 645N got these updated dials, which is cool. Uh, and then this camera has autofocus, which was never something that I kind of looked for, but it's kind of a fun feature to add. And that in combination with the automated film advance, um, really makes for a camera that's just kind of hands-free and it opens up a lot of kind of creativity and freedom. It's a fun walk around camera. And I actually used this camera uh, to shoot an entire trip earlier this year out to Route 66. And it was actually the longest kind of trip that I'd ever done with this camera. The previous trip I shot all six, seven. So I didn't really know what to expect, but I just went out there with this camera and the one lens, which is a 75 mil 2.8. And yeah, super sharp lens, tons of detail. Uh, for me, 645 negative is still plenty large and the Pentax in combination with this lens just really produce some nice results. If autofocus isn't something you're after and you purely wanna use manual focus and that's important to you, I would recommend checking out one of the original Pentax 645s just because they have a split image and a micro prism focusing screen. This does not, uh, you could get it as an accessory, but they're really hard to find. Uh, so it can be a little bit of a pain to focus manually with this camera, uh, other than the fact that it has a focus confirmation beep. But yeah, the lens on this is the Pentax 75 mil uh, FA lens, which is an autofocus F 2.8 version. And it's the only lens I own for this camera, but uh, the focal length suits me really well. And you know, I thought about buying a 55, but I've tried that out on a Mamiya before and it's just a little bit too wide for my taste. So yeah, this is kind of a camera when I just want to grab something, kind of be hands off and just walk around and experiment. So really fun camera. And I feel like for me, it's a nice compliment to the 672. Okay, so next camera up and last one, which is part of the kit is the Intrepid 4x5 MK4. And I've actually only owned this camera for about a year. Before this, I had a crown graphic, but I only had that for a short period of time and ended up selling it just because I wasn't using it that much. But at the start of the year, Intrepid sent me this camera and I just fell in love with 4x5 very quickly after using this. I've been enjoying this camera a lot, looking forward to shooting with it more in the future for some projects. But yeah, I mean, it's the second camera that I've ever owned when it comes to 4x5, but for me, I mean, this camera is super affordable uh, for a brand new camera, which is a huge plus. And then the weight of it, it's super lightweight. And then it just has all the movements that I would ever need for the work that I do. So really I can't see myself finding any reason to uh, swap this out or upgrade it at any point in the near future. And just excited to work with it over the next year or two. And when it comes to accessories for this camera, the only thing that I ended up adding was just a Fresnel uh, to the back of the camera. And this helped with screen brightness for composing. I got this Fresnel off of eBay. I think it was like 30 bucks or something like that. And it works really, really good. Um, I'll link to that in the description below if you wanna check it out, but I've been super happy with it. And then when it comes to a lens, I just have the one lens. This is a Fujinon 135 5.6. I think that equates to around a 35 mil in the 135 format. The negatives that I've exposed so far with this camera have been super detailed as you would expect. Uh, and the focal length suits me perfectly. So I may pick up 
just a little bit of a longer lens as a second lens, but I think for the most part, this 135 is going to suit me quite well moving forward. Okay, so moving on to accessories, but I just wanna mention quickly, like I said, I don't own a 35 mil camera anymore. And that's just because I was never happy with the scans I was getting from 35 mil. I just felt like they lacked potential for printing. I always felt kind of limited by it. Uh, but ever since I've got the CoolScan 9000 and started scanning some older 35 mil negs, I've really been impressed with the detail I can get out of those. So I'm thinking about maybe buying a 35 mil cam, uh, coming up just for some family documentary work, stuff like that. But moving on to accessories, first thing I wanna start with is light meters. And this is my go-to, this is the Sekonic L558R. So this is both an incident meter, uh, and then it's also a spot meter as well. Uh, so it's something that, especially if you're new to metering, you can grow into, but this gives you different options depending on what you're shooting uh, and the scene that you're trying to meter. So for instance, a lot of the landscape work that I do, especially on four x five, I'll use the spot meter. And that gives you a way to just really narrow in and read specific tones in an image uh, and just understand what's going on in your image and make the best decision when exposing. Uh, but then it also has the incident meter, which is great, especially say if you are shooting someone and you wanna just kind of meter for their skin and things like that. So yeah, dual purpose meter. It's a little more expensive. You can get some cheaper, smaller Sekonic models that also work great. Uh, but this is a really nice way to basically invest in a meter that you can grow into and you aren't really gonna need to replace probably ever. Okay, so tripod setup, this is kind of a two part deal. I have a different brand of legs and a different brand of head, but this setup I've owned, I think for 12 years now, and it's really served me well. The legs are by a company called Benro. They're not Gitzo legs, but I will say I'm someone who definitely believes that you get what you pay for, and I never have issues investing in the right gear. But I bought these Benro legs based off a recommendation of uh, another photographer years ago. And I gotta say, I've had them in swamps, uh, in the ocean, in sand, and they've held up really well. Uh, like I said, just a three-stage carbon setup. Uh, not super cheap. Probably gonna pay, I think, maybe around $400 US for a set of these legs, but they are probably about half the cost of a set of uh, Gitzo legs. So I've been really happy with them. Like I said, I've been using them for 12 years. They're still holding up. Uh, and I've invested in Benro legs for video stuff. So this tripod I'm using right now to film this video. Uh, and then I have another tripod as well by them. And yeah, just been happy with their gear. Uh, the head itself is by a company called Markins. This one is called the Markins Q10. I think it's around $350 US. So not the cheapest, but definitely not the most expensive. Can't see myself ever having to replace this head. And I've just had kind of minimal service to it, just some greasing over the years. But the nice thing about it is it's just um, got this friction based ball head and you can make these kind of micro adjustments to it just using this dial. So you can really get this um, tension, really dial it in. So when you have your camera mounted and you're composing, you can make these kind of micro adjustments to your composition. <laughs> Okay, so a couple smaller items up next. I'm gonna talk about straps. So I have two that I use. This first one is one that I get asked about quite often. So this is just like a simple rope style strap. This is off of Amazon, nothing special at all. I think it was like $20 US. And yeah, I mean, it's a pretty simple item. It's just a piece of rope. Can't really get too complex with something like this. And it does the job and it looks kind of cool. I will say if you have a heavier camera, this thing is pretty uncomfortable. Again, it's just a rope. Uh, so it works great for smaller, lighter, 35 mil cam, stuff like that. I have used it on the 645N before and it works, but it's not the most comfortable. But yeah, I'll put a link to that as well in the description below. So the main strap that I'm using is by a company called Peak Design. This is their slide. I think it's the SL2. They make an SL1 as well. Uh, but this is the biggest strap they make. Super comfortable, works great for the 672 as well as the 645N. But what's really nice about it is it has these quick release ends on it. And then you go and you have these fasteners here. See if I can get this all in focus at once. 
you have these fasteners, you get a bunch of these and you basically mount these fasteners on all your cameras and then you can go and you can swap this strap between your cameras uh, easily. So it's nice, you buy one camera strap, you can quickly swap it between cameras. You don't have to buy more than one. And then also, as the name states, slide. So you basically have these quick release straps here and you can adjust the camera strap really easily adjust the height depending on what camera you're using. For me, it's super comfortable. I run this on the Pentax 672 all the time and I've walked around for entire days with this and the camera and never felt any strain on my neck or anything like that. Okay, so next up are filters. Don't actually use that many filters for film photography, but the ones that I do use as of recently are the Tiffin Black Pro Mist. I've actually owned and used these for a while now for filmmaking and video work, but just started to use them for still work. I actually did a video on this not that long ago if you wanna check it out and just learn a little bit more about these. But yeah, just really fun to use. I own a quarter and an eighth. Gives me two options, a little less and something that's a little stronger, just depending on the scene and, and lighting and stuff like that. But yeah, fun filters to use. And then the next filter I own, I actually haven't really used this one yet. This is a Moment Cinebloom. This is a 20% version. They actually just released these filters and I haven't had a chance to play around with it too much, but just from the few clips that I've shot and just looking through this thing, it's quite a bit stronger than the Pro Mist that I have, but uh, yeah, same idea, just blooms the highlights. This one definitely lifts the shadows quite a bit, so helps with high contrast scenes and stuff like that, but gives you a really neat creative effect. So looking forward to using this one and uh, definitely gonna do a video about it coming up some point in the near future, so keep an eye out for that. Okay, so last thing I wanna talk about is just bags. Figured I probably should, considering this is all about what's my camera bag. But I actually don't have the two bags I own here because they are in a shipping container somewhere on the Atlantic Ocean with all my other stuff. But I'll mention them anyways. So the first one I own is by a company called, I think you pronounce it Domk? 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 <laughs> it's the F1X. It's a shoulder bag, canvas, waterproof. Super simple bag, but uh, tons of room inside. It has some dividers. You can kind of customize it. And I'll use this often to carry my 4x5 setup uh, or the 672 with lenses and film, light meter, stuff like that. Really spacious, tons of pockets, uh, really nice to use. So highly would recommend that one. And I think it is fairly affordable, like $150 US or something like that. Uh, but the only downside with that is depending on where you're going and what you're doing, I find shoulder bags can kind of get a little uncomfortable uh, over time. The second bag that I own is a backpack. It's by a company called Mindshift and it is the backlight version, 36 liter, I think. Uh, super customizable, opens from the back, tons of different pockets and stuff like that. And it's also very spacious. You can fit a lot of stuff in there. I can carry my 672 kit in there with lenses and even carry four by five if I lay it down and, and mess with the dividers a little bit. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up and covers kind of the essential things that I have in my kit. There's a few other things for large format like cable releases, film changing tents, stuff like that, but I didn't want this video to get too, too long. So in the future, I will do a large format gear guide, accessories, especially for people who are just interested in getting started with 4x5 and stuff like that. Uh, but hope you guys enjoyed this video and hope it helped answer some questions just when it comes to some of the accessories I do. The cameras I use probably weren't much of a shocker if you've been following this channel, but those are the ones that I have found suit me best just over years of trying different cameras. And really I'm at a point where I just want to know what works for me, buy that gear, and then just focus on creating work and not so much on testing different things out. Cause it really does take a lot of time to find a kit that works for you, build it up, learn how to use it, get comfortable with it and stuff like that. So for me, the 672 and the 645, it's really this perfect duo. And then the Intrepid gives me this large format option, which I could really see myself using quite a bit moving forward. So looking forward to seeing how I grow with that as well. Anyways, just wanna say thank you for watching. As always, appreciate all the support, all the comments, all that kind of stuff. And yeah, thank you guys. I'll talk to you soon.